The worst thing you can do is to make a bad decision, and it will remind itself for years to come and gradually eat you up. Luckily, we're playing Guild Wars 2, which has, compared to other games, a lot less bad choices and more on good or less good alternatives. But even the best game of the genre has its dark corners. So let's talk about some classic Guild Wars 2 noob traps. We will divide this video into four parts. The early game before level 80, the Visage Vault, the Gem Store, and the end game, which is 80, level 80, and beyond. Remember to like, subscribe for more, and comment below if there's another noob trap you believe I missed. Put simply, they give such a small improvement and you will quickly outlevel the gear anyways. Buy weapons for the sake of the skills or armor for the fashion and leave the stats focusing until level 80. There are plenty of guilds that will advertise their services in map chats, especially in starter zones. While this is a real game changer to find a group that you can call home, it is however a, a really really big red flag if a guild asks for 100% representation and or certain amount of activity. At the beginning of the game, focus on having a good time and don't let other players put expectations on your shoulders. That's for later. <laughs> Doing research is a winning tactic for long-term success in and enjoyment in any MMO. Do pay attention and recognize when a guide is educational or when it's pure entertainment and memes. There is sadly plenty of guides where personal opinions sneaks through and it's very difficult to see, especially as a new player. Guild Wars 2 is at its peak when it comes to the balance. The meta is very, very diverse and very few things are unplayable. Even the healer spec druid can now pump out a respectable damage. So for this, I would recommend checking multiple sources there to test it yourself and adjust accordingly. This is strictly for the birthday gifts. That is a yearly gift you get per character during their birthday. And they can be quite juicy. So keep your oldest character around for this purpose alone, or you will most likely regret it. If you're unsure which character that is, log into the one you suspect it might, it might be and type slash age. Alright, we're jumping to the wizards. The two worst noob traps in the wizard's vault is without a doubt the luck and obsidian shards. Both are very accessible, so there's re no real need to pursue them. Luck arrives from just salvaging gear, which you do anyways, and obsidian shards are easily bought by karma at the temple of Balthasar in Straits of Devastation. The gemstone, here's where real money gets involved. Sure, you can use gold to gems converter, but as a new player, that's, that's highly unrealistic. While fashion might be considered a noob trap, it's important to remember that there, there is no price high enough to look fine. But do remember that you're most likely gonna stop using the skins just after a couple of weeks. That aside, we got a controversial one. The hero points and the waypoint unlocks. These are very expensive and will only save you a few hours of gameplay. So, so simply put, it's not worth it by any means, especially not as a beginner. Speaking about boosting through content, the level 80 boost is something I strongly advise against new players. The leveling goes very quickly and it teaches you things gradually. So using the boost will most likely result in you having no idea where you are, what you're supposed to do or how to play. You even get them for free by buying some expansions, so you know, if you get them through there instead, don't buy them individually. Transportation charges are very much available from gameplay, so there's no need to stack them up through the gem store. Sources are varied, so some examples are PvP and World vs World reward tracks, map completion and achievements. Black line chest keys can be very tempting like all the other gambas, but it's as just like them very expensive and you're most likely gonna end up losing on the deal. And this one, I might be getting some comments about it, but I would personally not recommend unlimited gathering tool for beginners. Sure, they're very convenient since they won't break, but they're very very expensive and I believe if you got the amount of gems, you would be better off getting other things that, that, like character slots, shared inventory slots, or just any other account-wide upgrade, really. We have reached the end game. You can learn so much with little time by checking how much damage you do, how much how damage you can outheal without having players over your shoulders judging you. You find this in line search near the raid portals. Talk to the console and slap these settings on. Then interact with this in order to give yourself all of the boons. Now you simply start fighting. Your DPS will be displayed in the chat window. Take it to the next level by finding a good build, follow its guide, try the rotation, and apply this into practice. It's a big mistake. They are quite expensive and Ascendants are super available these days. Example for good source of Ascended gear is Wizard Vault, Icebreed Saga Strikes, 
Hot, Hot of Thorns raids and fractals. We do trainings every week, so just, you know, check us out on Discord. The link is below. Mm -hmm. You might even get lucky and get some random Senna drops, but sadly, they are probably not giving you the stats that you want. But do not worry, do not be disappointed, do not fear. There's a simple way to solve this. You can stat swap your Ascended. But unlike Legendaries, where you can just right click and change your stats on the fly, Ascended requires a little bit of little recipe in the Mystic Forge. But they're all very easily accessible, doesn't cost a lot. So go for it. Go for it. Don't do this too frequently though, because you're probably going to run, run out of Spirit Shards. Just saying. Dude is a scammer. Just just don't. Avoid him. He's in the Wizard Tower. And it might seem very convenient, but dude just straight out takes ectoplasms as payment. So don't craft anything through him. Check out the things on Wiki or Guild Wars 2 efficiencies to see how you can make it yourself and literally save gold. It's the same things required. You just keep your ectoplasms, keep, keep keeping your purple balls alone. Speaking about legendary crafting, do not craft precursors to Gen 1 weapons. The wizards have been handing them out for free for, for a year now, which has se severely lowered its market value. Crafting one will cost you hundreds of gold, while buying it from trading post is less than 100, most likely around 50 gold. Finally, the last noob trap, and by far the most important one, if you got stuck in a trap, mistakes were made, gold was wasted, gems was used on the wrong things, contact ArenaNet support. They have a track record of being incredibly helpful. Whether you accidentally bought the wrong thing from the gem store, crafted the wrong item for your legendary, you explored the wrong map. <laughs> Go for it. This is something I've experienced firsthand, so don't hesitate to give it a shot. The worst that can happen is that you get a, that you get a no. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please subscribe, like, and check me out on Twitch, where I do a bunch of Guild Wars 2 streams weekly. Thank you for your time, and I hope you have a great day.